But he's not. What? <laughs> Why is this kid doing this to me? Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash nerdycrafter for 15% off your order. <clears throat> Tea. Hey Greens, today on Capture Trash, we're going to be reviewing a kit that was sent to me about two years ago. <laughs> As you saw in the uh, title of today's video, we're going to be looking at Cano Coding Kit for Disney's Frozen 2. A few years back, I did the coding kit for Harry Potter, and it was such a lovely experience, despite the fact that, yes, there were some bugs here and there. I genuinely enjoyed the experience and it got me really excited. So fast forward, about the same week that I did this video, I, you know what, I lost track of time. I don't even know how long it's been. Let's look at that date. Don't judge me, my brain goes here and sometimes there. Kano actually contacted me and asked me if I would like to receive more of their coding kits and I'm like, heck yeah, but um, I didn't do anything with them. They just kind of stayed in my closet and I totally forgot about them, sorry. So what I want to find out is, are there still bugs in the Cano coding kit and how does this Frozen kit compare to my actual experience with the Harry Potter one? Especially the Harry Potter one was really expensive. I think at the time it was close to $150 and it was advertised everywhere. However, this Frozen kit is actually $50, a fraction of the price of the one I actually, that's half the price of what I paid for. So is it as fun? Are there as much? bugs? Is it going to be interesting? Are there limited actions? Because according to the actual video on Kano's website, you should be able to make hand gestures and these hand gestures correspond to the actions happening on screen. So it is nothing short of magic per se, which in all reality sounds really fun and exciting. Oh, and if we do have time, I definitely have more Frozen merch that we can review afterwards. For those of you wondering, yes, Salty Crafter loves this Disney and is obsessed with Frozen 2, especially, the, you know, the, the music parts. I didn't think Salty Crafter was into music, but just look at her. She's having the time of her life. Let me know in the comment section below, do you think this kit will be an amazing one? Or will it go in the trash? I personally have really high hopes. By the way, those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. I publish twice a week. I, I do a little bit of everything. And when you do subscribe and click on all notifications, you are automatically part of the grains here for the Salt Shaker family. Also, if you're into gaming, follow me on Twitch. Link will be down below. I do stream almost every day. With that said, time to see what we get inside. So on the top part of the flap, we have the motion sensor instruction manual, which is quite the thing. And what are you? Stickers! I love stickers so much! Basically snowflakes and then chibi versions of the characters. We also get... what's this? A compliance leaflet. <laughs> And now, down here, we should have the pièce de résistance. So here is the manual. Wait, that's the same thing we got, but this one's in French. I'm not gonna read it in French. Even though technically French is my second language and English is my third language, let's just go with English. And... Ooh. What? They also gave us batteries? Okay, most of these kits just don't include batteries, but they gave us batteries. That is super thoughtful. I appreciate very much. You've just gained one point. All right, so let's remove everything from this box. Read the instructions of how to put it together. Here is a close-up of the motion sensor. Very interesting. Most of you grains know by now that I highly encourage kits that have a value in order to learn a new skill, or at least something that you can have fun with while learning a new skill. Most kits don't do that now. So my expectations for this are not just here, but they're up there. I'm watching you very closely. Watch me actually hurt myself. <laughs> I was so scared I was gonna poke myself. Anything under here? No. Okay, let's do the doing. Let's start by looking at the actual manual. Because this is advertised as an educational material, it should, in theory, be user-friendly and engaging. Especially because it is advertised for younger people and beginners. Oh, I didn't mean to make everything on my desk fall. 
You saw nothing. All right, so let's look. Okay, that is cute. Prepare for adventure. They give us the list of materials. Very straightforward, very clean and simple design. Step into the unknown. I like that. I like that they're using the movie elements in order to tell us how to prepare ourselves. So on this page, they're telling us to pick up this piece and it's called a PC. CB, printed circuit board. I'm learning. I feel my brain expanding. Look how big it's getting. Oh, it's a big brain. Much big brain. And then basically they tell us to put in the batteries. All right, so let's go ahead and see what else we learn. So at this point already on page, I think four or five, 10? Why is it page 10? And now we're already learning about infrared motion sensing. So there's a lot of information that's going in here, but the fact that they're keeping the words simple and the text to a minimum makes it so that this is very approachable. It's quite similar to the one I had with Harry Potter. So I'm going to say that this little manual, very user friendly. Time for putting it together. Oh, flashing. Oh, not anymore. Oh, flashing. Whoa! So technically this is where things get interesting because we have the sensor that knows which side we are coming from. So you see, it detects from the bottom, top, and sides. And if we go all over, how cool, it is very reactive. Look at this, very reactive. So if I were to just do here, you have all three. Look at that. That is pretty nifty. Who says nifty nowadays? In my time, we all said nifty and groovy and things like that. Now I think in the Harry Potter kit we had a bit of a hard time with the apps so I don't think it worked as well on PC so I had to use it on a Mac I think I'm not sure so I'm still using it with a Mac so let's go ahead and click on laptop desktop Mac OS and now we're just going to install it and see what pops up all right so at this point I really hope that whatever music they're using is not licensed and if it is we're just going to have to mute it let's see what we get okay what Okay, pick a username. Nerdy. Oh, Murdy, what? Nerdy. Continue. Password. Okay. What? What? Where is everything going? What just happened? It's not even on the taskbar anymore. <sighs> yes, the salt has arrived. All right, let me try and find the program, see what the heck happened, and we'll be right back. All right, so there is a bit of a problem. As you can see, I'm going to turn the screen on for this and it's going to ask us to sign in. But even if I do absolutely nothing, keep an eye on the screen, it's just going to vanish. And I've tried this at least four times at this point. This is supposed to be a coding kit, but it seems like whoever's behind this did not do their coding properly. So let's wait and see. It's just gonna close completely on its own. I'm not even gonna touch it. It's gonna look at it. See, it's gone. <laughs> just like that, it was like, I'm out of here. I've tried this six times and it still does not want to open. So you know what? Let's go ahead and speed run through this. Oh, it kept my information. I, I did a quick speed run of putting all my information. Okay, next, searching for your kit. Am I supposed to turn turn it on? Okay, it's, it's on. It's doing the thing. Don't close. Don't you dare close. Hello? Oh, and it closed. <sighs> The Harry Potter kit didn't work on a Chromebook, but it did work on this specific computer. I'm gonna go get my tablet and we're gonna see if that works. All right, here I have my tablet. We're going to go as a download and let's get it. And hopefully we're going to have better luck with this because if it's not working on two devices, that's going to be an ultimate strike. Open. All right, so now we can sign in. Let's try and sign in normally. So I will be salty cube for an ice cube. Continue. Password, I got you. All right, so, so far it has not shut down at all. Let's go ahead and press start playing. All right, let's see if they can find the device. Here it is. Is it close enough? Next. Okay. Please be smooth. So we're just going to wait here. I don't know if I'm supposed to press a button. Oh, kit not found. Okay. Give me a second again. All right. So Bluetooth is turned on. We're going to make sure that we do have sound. We need to make sure that the kit is on. Okay. And that your kit is nearby. Try again. I really don't know any other way because there you go. There we go. You better sing. Well, I swear. I swear. Yes. Success. Finally. <laughs> It has defeated me. <laughs> Continue. <gasps> we got it. We got it. Okay. Am I customizing myself now? Okay. Let's stay with the theme of this face. <laughs> and we're going to give the body. Let's, let's, 
I want, I want this. Can I change my hair? Oh, there we go. Hair. Are there any hats? Obviously no hats. Okay, let's do this. Oh, there's a hat right there. Oh, we don't have many choices. Okay, we'll just do this. Body, accessories. Mm, mm, mm. I don't want any accessories. Companions. Oh, yeah. Well, that's cute. And an object. I don't know why I need an object, but let's go with uh, this thing. Oh, there's flying objects? What if I don't want any? I guess I guess this will do. Done. To begin your journey, place your hand over the sensors. Okay, so now we need to move a little bit. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna activate it this way. Now, now what? That's, do I just press next? Okay, mm next. I don't understand. I think it desynced because we're supposed to get numbers on the screen. At least I think so. Can you make all the numbers 50? I don't think it's, is it not reading anymore? Is it? There we go. Come on. Any numbers on the screen? Come on. Do I just, what do I do? I don't want to skip. Very frustrated. Okay, so I did click on a button called that, that little top button over here. It says connection lost. Let's reconnect. Connecting. We can see that the button here is still blue. Okay, so it is connected. Good. Now we can start. And we have all these different scenes. We have create snowflakes, large snowflakes, make it snow, snowstorm, conjure a blizzard, and remix a blizzard. So let's go ahead and create snowflakes. See what the coding is going to be all about. Are you ready to begin your journey? Drag the particle snowflake. Okay. So so we're grabbing this block and putting it here. Move my hand over the sensor. Okay, okay, so we have the snowflakes. If I remove my hand, the snowflakes are gone. If I put my hand over it, we have snowflakes that are starting. So let's look at it in full screen. There we go. And you can see that the sensor knows where my hand is, but we haven't really done anything. It's just kind of staying right in the middle. All right, what is the next challenge? Okay, that was simple. Now it's time for a flurry. So I'm guessing at this point, we should be able to move them. That's what I thought. Okay, so we're starting again with the exact same thing. We're putting this in place, and now we're going to learn the code in order to make the move. So we have pointer X. Where did we put that? Here? Did I mess up? Hang on. Oh, that is finicky. That is finicky. So there was a possibility that I could have done it in the entire line, but I had to choose a very specific code. Okay, so at this point, when we put our hand, we can move it up and, oh, that is side to side. Okay, so side to side. And now we can take Y and put it into Y over there. So now we should have full motion. Let's go ahead and try. Uh, okay, there we go. Up and down. I'm thinking it would be easier just to kind of, yeah, you see? You, have to st you know what? We'll stay in the middle. But yeah, we can definitely move it around now. So it's a little bit of a magic. Well, I mean coding. And on the big screen, it's definitely a lot more interesting than looking at it from the code's perspective. But there's not that much control. I mean, I'm trying to bring it to the top right. Over. Oh, let's bring it top right. There we go. Kind of have to do a little, a little, a little gymnastics. <laughs> Here we go. There. So it's a little bit everywhere. Okay, I want to get to the more interesting things. All right, so we're going to continue with the same idea. This time we're making bigger snowflakes. I need to get to the X and then the Y. Right, do I, do I, do I have it? There. Drop. Where do I drop it? Here? Okay, we already did this one. Why is it? This is really buggy compared to la No. There. Why? I mean, I did that. Why is it being all buggy? Frozen kit into the code space. So where, okay, we're putting it into size. Okay, so now, oh wow, these are these are big, big snowflakies. Look at that, they're way bigger. I wonder if it has to do with height or just speed. So here we go. They're much, much, much bigger. As you can see, my hands are going up and down. Pretty good. Next, time to make it snow. Now we have the every one second. So we're gonna do that. And then the particle, random number block and we're going to replace the entire thing. Okay, oh wait, I don't, 800? So, so far compared to the Harry Potter experience that I had, this one is definitely a lot more complex and I'm, st I'm still not feeling it because so far I know it's frozen, I know it's about snow, but I feel like there's just so much passion missing into this. And again, I know it's supposed to be the progression of the story, but at least in Harry Potter, we got so much more going on, color changes and size. So far, we only have size. And also, I have no idea what the code I'm doing means. Oh, 180. There. See, I still don't understand. This is supposed to be minus 50. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing and I I really want to love this kit. Now what? Okay, so now we're just making it snow and higher or lower doesn't make that much of a difference. I'm not sure if I can make it snow just one side of the screen and the answer is no. So my hand is on one side and the other, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. What if I just kind of go over here? What about just this side? It doesn't seem to make a difference, at least not to me. I'm gonna play around with this a little longer and then we're going to get to the interesting stuff. Let's see if it gets 
Let, let's just see if it gets interesting. And now I've learned how to make the snow go from either left side or the right side. There you go. So now we are at the biggest project of this segment, which is creating our own remix. So they give us a little bit of a pointer form in order to change the background and see what we like. But if you notice, you're going to see that some backgrounds just don't show up on the screen on the right side. This one works. Let's try another one. This one won't work. Let's try again. So for some reason, this one has way more bugs than it, than, than, than it was supposed to. You would think by then a, pro a product that was out this long would have been fixed. So, so far all of them seem to work except for this one. I don't know why. This one? Okay. I guess so far so good. We're just missing some. And then over here, it tells us in order to have more snow, we can just input a number. It doesn't give us an actual range of numbers. It's just a number. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I want 50 because we've used 50 in other things. And um, look, look at this lag. That is quite the lag. So can we control it? Oh, wow. Whoa. That's coding. I'm, I'm going to learn. <laughs> But the lag seems to fix itself after a little bit. So let's just go with a reasonable number, which is let's eight. And now we can change the wind. And we know that the direction of the wind is basically the angle. So let's go with an 85, well, 80, 80, 80, okay, 74 degree angle. <laughs> no, I'm not done. I'm not, what? I'm not done. No, I'm going back in here. You don't get to tell me what I'm done with. Start. Let's continue where we left off. They didn't even keep the same, any, any. And so now that we finished the entire create snow segment, which was absolutely uninspiring, the second segment is more ice and snow. It's, uh, why? And these are branches, but they're snow branches and they're fractals. So I'm going to try and skip this entire area and go straight to Olaf because that's going to be more interesting. Now, can we skip segments and are they still going to educate us? Because at this point, I'm tired of just moving snow around. I want to see Olaf walk around and be silly because that's what he do all right so now we have event trays which are new and they seem to have chosen the background for us and we have this here and now we go into object trays so they really still are guiding us which is a marvelous thing so we're gonna create this oh very cute i like that so now we can actually select different characters this is more interesting now we're getting into the good stuff so i'm guessing change to olaf yes that's what I'm talking about. This is where we need to go. Exactly where we need to go. I really like the fact that they're telling us that these numbers have to do with gravity. If we put it to zero, he should fall. Isn't that, isn't that what they said? Let's see again. There we go. What's happening here? Why are you bugging? Is Are you okay? Okay. Did we just bug? Let's try to throw this. Let's try to get it again. There. It's not recognizing it. At this point, what you're seeing rain down during saltiness intensifies, it's not snow, it's salt. We're raining down salt. Okay, I have no idea what's happening here. It's not recognizing the code because we're not going to the next one. But if I go out and come back in. All right, so I went out of the program and then back into this challenge. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're going to drag when the app starts. Next is the object, put it here, change it to Olaf, a little boy. And we have so many different characters that we can actually animate made and work around with. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> we have so many items. So, okay, we're going to focus on Olaf. I, I kind of, just a little, just a little sidetrack. And then here we can add our zero so that it's gravity, but nothing really happened. Okay, so we're going to pull this in. See, now it works. And then physics, pull that here, force on, what am I supposed to, to Olaf? Okay. Mm, now put the, why do I, why does this have to be 400? Okay. So now we're going to use our hand and see what happens. Um, Wait, what? Oh, okay, there you go. So it's kind of like this jumpy movement, <laughs> as you can see, side by side with my hand going up. See, my hand goes there and he just does this. Oh, my shoulder. Maybe I should use my other hand. There you go. <laughs> no, it's only working with this one. Dang nabbit. There you go. So we have that little hop with that hand motion. So now we can change the direction and we put it to 315. Uh, uh, there. I think, okay, 315 from forward to left. So now the hop should be diagonal. No, what? All right, so we're gonna add another event and I think this one we're adding the right side. So now we should be able to get a hop. Why am I having such a hard time? One eternity later. 
<laughs> oh, okay, there we go. So I think we're supposed to move. Oh my god, I'm not sure. Is this? Let's try. I'm just sitting here like. <laughs> I, I really had it. Okay, let me try with my hand just going straight. I am genuinely getting frustrated. Grains, I am genuinely getting frustrated with this kit. Why is there no hopping? Let's go back to the main screen. I did everything as it asked for. And he did do a tiny hop. I just don't get it. If I do this way, no. If I do that way. Okay, so he's going that way. He did a tiny hop as you saw, but he's not. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this kit doing this to me? This is nowhere near as fun as the Harry Potter kit. Holy carp. Did they just stop supporting this? <laughs> now that I went into the next Olaf uh, environment, just take a look. It can't connect to the, 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 this thing. It can't connect to it. I press connect. It's doing that little searchy thing. And then for, for, so I did it four times before this and it said it couldn't connect. Even though it's right here and the blue button is on. Oh. Now you connect. I'm so frustrated. All right, so after doing this specific code, we're supposed to get a gust of wind that we can move around. But if we look closely, nothing is happening to these snowflakes. It's almost as though the code that they programmed isn't interacting with the program of the program. Does that make sense? All right. That's I'm the, I think I'm done. I'm really done. I came into this review up here with expectations, but now I'm, oh, my heart is broken, but I can't even be sad because they broke my heart. I am furious like the wind. Is the wind furious? Furious like the salt. So despite the fact that I actually enjoyed the Harry Potter kit, and I really came in with high expectations for the Disney Frozen coding kit, and the fact that they sent this to me, which means they should have been confident. I am really sad that this kit was just way more frustrating to work with. Things weren't working, the codes were off, it kept bugging with every interface. There's no way this is worth $50 as it is right now. So unfortunately, this kit for me on the Mac and for the iPad would go in the trash. So frustrating. Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever used a cano cano kit cano kit for coding. And if you did, what was your experience? Because I feel at this point they're probably focusing more on the educational stuff, like their laptops and webcams and all that. And these coding kits may have taken a back burner. So as mentioned at the beginning of today's video, we are sponsored by Raycon. They are huge supporters of this channel, so I really appreciate them. And many of you grains already picked up your own Raycons, so I have to say thank you as well, because by supporting Raycon, you are directly supporting this channel. And for those of you who don't know Raycon, let me tell you about them. Raycon earbuds are some of the best out there and starting at only half the price, and they are challenging the premium brands out there. Raycon earbuds are my favorite. They've designed premium wireless audio for half the price with no compromise. Look at these absolutely adorable colors. You'll find one that suits you best. In addition to absolutely stylish design with beautiful colors, not to mention they are so discreet. I mean, look, you can't even tell I'm wearing them. Nothing to dangle, nothing to be in the way. Raycon also prioritizes customer experience. And for that, they have a 45 day free return policy. So you really have nothing to lose by giving it a try. And if my word isn't enough, celebrities like Brandy are obsessed with them. I absolutely love using my Raycons when I'm sculpting. That I really get into the zone and sometimes feel the sculptures creature of darkness and with six hours of playtime this tiny charger gives you four whole charges so that's 24 hours of total playtime and because they are a noise isolating fit with many options to fit different ears you're getting a more comfortable compact design and more bass so whether you want to listen to music while you're crafting or even your favorite podcast there really is no risk when trying Raycon so click the link in description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash nerdy for 15% off your order. Thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring today's video. If you want to watch the previous Cano Harry Potter kit, check it up here. And if you want to watch a review video of five minute crafts, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you in the next video. So angry. <laughs>